Big T, I need your thoughts on the Coach Cal saga because we haven't done a show since that night. That that happened real quickly. I don't think anybody saw it coming. Um, I I once they did that little like press conference and was like he's gonna stay. I I thought he might have tried to leave before that, but yeah, that was uh, it's pretty crazy. We and we did talk about it on Monday, by the way. We did. But yeah, that happened Sunday. Oh, it night. happened Sunday night. You're right. You're right. I completely forgot about that. But now it's official. And who are they going to get? Not Nate Kentucky. Oates. Not, so, not Danny Hurley, probably. Uh, Scott Drew put out a tweet just a few minutes ago. Of there was a there was a flight from Waco to Lexington today. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of speculation that he was on it. He put out a tweet uh, of him at lunch in Waco and said, "Like no better place to have lunch than so and so. Great great lunch spot in Waco on a rainy day. No better friend and supporter than Eric Shiro in Alliance Bank." And he doesn't he doesn't seem like the type of guy to put something out like that if he's leaving. Yeah, that seems like there's a signal there. So if 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 it goes past him and you assume Hurley has said no, you would just yeah. like maybe they're trying to wait for Billy Donovan. But yeah. one, I don't know that you can afford to do that now with like the way you need to assemble a roster with the transfer portal and everything. You need to coach immediately. And as a as a fan of a rival of Kentucky, Billy Donovan, Billy, college basketball is a completely different sport from when Billy Donovan left it. Now, obviously, incredible college basketball coach when he was doing it, mm -hmm. but there's no guarantee that he steps in in the current climate and is awesome. Yeah. So uh, so let's say they don't don't get him either. Now you're at who? I don't know. Brad Underwood. Brad Underwood, not bad. Um, Otzelberger. Let me tell you what's going to happen in Lexington, Kentucky, if they hire T.J. Otzelberger. He's a good coach. There will be riots in the streets. Is he too boring? And I'm here for it. Yes, absolutely. That's he's, the No, he's a good coach. What about... There are still good coaches on the board, but if you get past Scott Drew and Donovan, I think there's going to be a lot of people that are really pissed off. Sean Miller? I don't know. Bruce Pearl? Bruce Pearl, I think... Um, would probably be the best option at that point. I don't know if they would do it. Do you think you think Bruce would? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 names the list of names is growing smaller by the day. By the second. If it's not Scott Drew, I'm excited. That that, that means this thing could get bad quickly. Yeah. And so Scott Drew, he's um he's a great coach, obviously. Baylor was under the death penalty when he started working there. And yeah. he, he built the program from absolutely nothing, um, less than nothing, from like down in a hole. He he did a great job there. He's also a super, super religious guy, like very religious. When when we interviewed him, he was talking about how he builds his program around like faith in God. That's one of like he tells all of, all of his players. He's at right now Baylor, which is what Baptist, right? I believe it's a Baptist, Baptist school. school. Yeah. Don't know if the culture fit at Kentucky is as nice for him as, as having that home in Baylor where everything is kind of revolving around your faith. I think I asked him, like, would you recruit a, a, an atheist if, like, being having faith in God is something super important to you? And he's, he kind of dodged it. He ducked it a little bit. He, I, I think he would. If the player was good enough, he would recruit an atheist. Uh, but he would pray for that guy every day. <laughs> I think that's his out. Scott Drew's a great coach who I think would not fit in well at Kentucky. Yeah. Was and that? I think he probably knows that. I mean, it's there are no professional teams in Kentucky that it's it's the much the same as Tennessee football. Like those schools where that is the thing in that entire area mm -hmm. are covered like professional teams and the fans are not accepting of anything other than excellence. Mm -hmm. And I think he is more than content to be have a really good program at Baylor and do so in relative not am anonymity but he can live his life there okay whereas if you're the head coach at kentucky it, your life is radically different it is and you're the center of everything and also the fan base i think is it's meaner at kentucky more aggressive the aggressive for sure baylor fans are you know they're happy if you're competitive he won a national championship at baylor he could never go to a sweet 16 again and he would still be revered there yeah yeah it's true yeah kentucky i don't know i don't know i also every time a coach says something like i'm not going we live in such a uh like a what's the word i'm looking for not hypocritical really but 
people change their minds a lot when it comes to these types of jobs, this type of money. So when a coach says, I'm not going, I still don't believe him. I'm like, oh, that, he just wants Sometimes, more money. Sometimes, but like at Scott Drew, I would be shocked if Scott Drew puts out a tweet like that and then leaves. Yeah. And then he can go back and say like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, I just he, really like that diner. I do wonder if Scott Drew saying no and the uh, the situation with having to wait on Donovan. So there was a report that they offered Hurley $11 million. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but it was reported. I wonder if they go back to him and they're just like, "What? What's the number?" Yeah, fifteen. I mean, once you've offered eleven, what's fifteen, sixteen? Yeah. At that point, who cares? Yeah, I I don't know what the uh what the actual limit that the boosters would set on it. I feel like if you're not paying a buyout to Coach Cal, yeah, they just saved thirty. And when Kentucky basketball does well, everybody eats. Yeah, it's invaluable to the entire state. You have to have so much money, so much money to be a big-time athletic booster like that because you don't get anything in return for your money besides, obviously, you get... Well, in, it, no, that's that's well not true at uh, all. Okay, it's not an investment, but you get you know nice seats. You get some... You get power. You get power. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. what they want. Yeah. Cal is having a meeting, I believe, tonight with like the Tyson Chicken guy, the Waltons of Walmart. And like they're going to his house, I guess, and are gonna lay out like the whole deal with like that's awesome. Over under half of a product inside the Walton's house that was purchased at Walmart. Over. You think they have one? Yeah, I mean probably a you know, a plunger or something. No, no, I think they're you don't want to stick a just a, a run of the mill four dollar plunger in that in that golden toilet you got. They gotta have something. I'd say I'd say five and a half would be a good line. Five and a half, maybe like a, I mean, a how many, cheap baby toy. How many items in a normal American home were purchased at Walmart? Forty. Yeah, probably twenty, forty. So like, so so four and a half. Maybe like a toothbrush that they got on the road. Yeah. Like so, oh, I forgot. I forgot yeah, to tiny pack things. One. Nothing consequential, but they've got a couple. I bet. Yeah. But like that's that once you have that much money and you can have any material possession you want, that's the coolest thing you can have. Just power, just influence over things, influence over everything in your life that you enjoy. Yes. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like, okay, what do I do with my downtime? I like to, I like to watch sports. Well, what's a good way for me to watch sports, but also control sports? Like if I somehow became crazy rich, literally, I the first thing I'd do is I would call the University of Tennessee and I'd be like, what, what's the number? For me to be in the group, like the group of people who make the decisions, how much does that cost? And then I would pay it. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to show up to Hurley's house with just a, it'd be such a power move if you took like a Brinks truck, an actual Brinks truck, and you just drove it to his house and you just opened Somebody up the back. Somebody should do that literally yeah, at some point. They should. They probably have a Brinks truck and then Hurley's like, ah, I don't know. I really like it in the Northeast. And they're like, okay, bring the next trailer around. And then there's just four thoroughbred horses in there. They're all running the Derby next year. They're all yours. <laughs> they just give them horses. Come on, man. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think Hurley's going to go. I don't think Drew's going to go. Nate Oates, off the table. Already said he's not going. Already said he's not going to go. I'm excited at the prospects of this coaching search getting ugly. It could. You know what? Here's what I would do if I had unlimited money. I would fly. Pri I would, right now, I would book a private jet to fly from Waco to Lexington. Nobody on it. Schools have done that. Nobody on it. Have they? Yeah. They sent like a fake jet? Yeah. SEC? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's happened. I, would, I don't know if nobody on it, but they have intentionally um, made flight routes that to as smoke screens. That has happened. I would, I would book one from Tuscaloosa to Lexington right now, too. That would send people into a tailspin. Yeah. I would do that just to, just to fuck with Rico. No other reason. <laughs> Just so I could do a screenshot of that flight. We actually should. I mean, we have people here who could make a make graphic. It, yeah, you that. know what? We uh, should do that. Uh, who should I text here? Quigs. Yeah, Quigs. I'll text Quigs in a second. 